Hi, today we are going to learn about Schumacher, E.F. Schumacher. It's a lesson prescribed for fourth semester B.Sc. B.C.A. Schumacher, this lesson, this article is written by Satish Kumar. He is an Indian activist and an ed editor, Jane Monk. He also worked towards nuclear disarmament. Um, he is an advocate and a pacifist. Okay. To move on to Schumacher, Schumacher Yaru. He was a German born economist. He was born in Germany in 1911, born city, and he moved to uh, Britain um, before the Second World War in 1930s as a Rhodes Scholar to study economics in um, New College in Oxford. He has written some Two books. I mean, two books are published. One is a collection of essays called "Small is Beautiful," and that is the book that uh, inspired a lot of people. And uh, there is another book by him called uh, "A Guide for the Perplexed," published posthumously after his death. And there is another book called "Good Work," which is a collection of his speeches. Or Bhashnagar don't sangraha koda publish ayega. His economic thoughts are quite different from the regular economists' thoughts because uh, he started working with uh, developed, not developed, underdeveloped or developing countries. Our even the uh, association with these developing countries brought about a change in his thinking. What is this change and why is that important is what we are going to look at now. He was sent to Burma uh, to advised the Burmese government to um, implement the Western economic thoughts so that there the Burmese people's life standards could improve. But when he goes to Burma, he realizes that they don't actually need the Western economic uh, model at all because they already have a better economic model which is quite fruitful which is more suitable to their own conditions to their own culture to their own people so he starts wondering how come i mean western economics is not required to these people and they have a better one probably the western countries have to learn from these countries these underdeveloped countries certain things is what he thinks he thinks the west actually needs to learn about things like simplicity spirituality and the good sense of other cultures. He also goes on to say that the many problems, the pollution kind of problems and many other problems that the world faces today are the result of the idolatry of giantism that the West is into. His book, Small is Beautiful, was very popular among the British parliamentarians, uh, the members of the British parliament. And uh, it was so influential that the questions, the issues that he raises and discusses in his book, they, <coughs> they intrigued and troubled um, Jimmy Carter, the president of the USA, so much that he was invited to the White House to advise the president. At the same time, um, the governor of uh, California, uh, Jerry Brown, initiated so many uh, measures in his state which uh, were inspired by his thoughts, by Schumacher's thoughts. Now what is Schumacher actually talking about or what is he talking against is what we are going to look at. Um, those days, this was the dominant principle the bigger the better everything seemed to be have got had got to be big and uh, the large institutions the mncs the industrial mergers the unlimited economic growth and the huge consumption everything were considered to be the symbols of progress there was idolatry of jaintism now he goes to Burma. What happens in Burma? In 1955, when he was sent to Burma as the development advisor to the government of Burma, um, where he was supposed to uh, teach them the Western models of economics, he discovered that Burmese people did not need any of this. 
uh, western economics at all because they already had their own economic system and there he writes an essay very famous essay called buddhist economics and he says that this economics of these burmese people was quite good it it supported their highly developed religion and their culture and the Burmese people were able to produce so much of rice, enough rice, surplus of rice which was sufficient to themselves and also they were able to sell that surplus rice in the markets of India. So here are a few concepts that Shoemaker talks about. One of them is Buddhist economics. What is Buddhist economics? Buddha, Buddhism, economics, they are two different things but somehow he brings them together. Economics, he says, without spiritual values can only give temporary satisfaction. There should be an element of spirituality in economics is what he says. And Buddhist economics, it included uh, service to the fellow human beings. There was compassion in this Buddhist economics and Buddhist economics did not concern itself completely with profits alone. It concerned with the well-being of the people. That is the difference between the Western economics and the Buddhist economics. There is another concept that uh, Shoemaker talks about in Tindra, the principle of disappearing middle. Madhyama, karadu hogtiruva, madhyama anadu atamataradu. Yenan tandaritrali, the farmers are either stuck with the sickle, kudugolu, kudlu, athava, they are stuck with high end state of the art technology like JCB, earth movers, uh, combined harvesters, things like that. I mean, either this or that. So, what he actually says is, any new modern technology that is introduced will displace the previous one completely. So what the uh, farmers or the ordinary laborers will be left with is either very simple tools which are of not that much use or high-end equipments which are expensive and technical and complicated to operate. And Schumacher says, Nama raitari ke beke rutu, nama kuli karmikari ke beke rutu, tira simple, not very simple tools, nor very high end kind of equipment. They need something in between, something, some technology that is affordable that they can use all by themselves without depending on a technician to operate it. Another thing Shoemaker talks about is sustainable agriculture. Agriculture andre he girebe kontandre. He was actually the president of Soil Association and he himself spent much of his time in organic garden in his organic garden. And he says the sim in the simple question of how we treat uh, the land, our entire way of life is involved. The callous attitude of, to nature, it causes heedless urbanization and needless industrialization. Love soil, simple like Hervakandra. He says, care for the land and soil is fundamental to caring for the whole of the natural world. It's essential, he says. Shoemaker Matarta Kanta Matondo concept Yadantandra soil, soul and society. Avatina Dina during the 1960s and 70s the uh, more popular uh, theme or idea was mind, body and soul. But Schumacher finds it very narrow. Narrow because everything about it is uh, human centered and individualistic. It's all about human mind, human body, human spirit. But it leaves out the questions of social justice. It leaves out the question of caring for the earth. So, Schumacher talks about soil, soul and society. He, he is more concerned about the larger, I mean people rather than one individual. So, you could say Schumacher was a holistic and ecological economist. He was not at all in support of this modern economics because modern economics and Tantra, it's all about profits, produce more in big scale, in huge scale, consume more and make big profits. This is all modern economics is about. In fact, Schumacher named his book Small is Beautiful, other one subtitle for the subtitle for that book is a study of economics as if people matter it's not money always it's people that should matter according to him
so he says economics must be a way of sustaining restoring and maintaining the immense diversity and complexity of the biosphere he says economics is to serve people and also planet he doesn't leave out the planet jana matra alla bhoomi anno grahanu kuda gamanda ittukoltane and he says economics should nourish nurture and fulfill appropriate human needs the major concept talked about by schumacher is small scale sanna pramanadalli maadbekellanu kuda anta heli because to save to serve people and planet both you need to have you need to have this approach small produce small but those days everything had to be had got to be big in scale he says he gives an example of a biscuit um, lorry one the lorry it leaves from manchester to london full of biscuits it's transporting biscuits from manchester to london at the same time another lorry is uh, it leaves from london to manchester again carrying a load full of biscuits he wonders what is the need it's a total waste of human resource human labor uh, uh, fossil fuel it's it causes environmental pollution what's the point of this kind of production this kind of economic why is he against this large scale uh, of economy simple because after a certain point one point aadmele people involved they will they will become disempowered and a bureaucratic machine bureaucratic system takes over control takes the control in its intuits and idukondu udaharane kodtare an example take an example of a school full of 1000 children where nobody knows anybody children merely become numbers aim of education is to meet the targets of the system the requirements of the system and the actual aim the development of the whole child is forgotten this is what happens when you give prominence to scale large scale same thing happens in hospitals if it's a small clinic the doctor knows the patient if it's a small school the teacher knows the student the parents know the teachers if it's a small factory the employer the employee know each other well if it is big nobody knows anybody and the concern will be to uh, uh, maintain the institution the well being of the institution becomes more important than the well being of the people he says big organizations mean big problems small organizations mean small problems which can be solved easily locally and the same thing applies to politics also he says he gives the example of countries like sweden and switzerland where change can be easily introduced when compared to countries like china uh, usa or india so his three basic principles are small simple and non violent these are the three philosophical precepts on which he bases his economic thought so these are the things about schumacher and uh, after his death in 1977 there was a schumacher society which was established in britain which is now found in india also in usa also and they are continuing with the ideas and the work of schumacher and to conclude you could say that Schumacher was more than an economist he was a practical man he was inspired by um the economies of the smaller countries the underdeveloped countries or the developing countries he inspired many people through his lectures and work at the grassroots so his advice like pollution must be brought under control and mankind's population and consumption of resources must be steered towards a permanent and sustainable equilibrium is what he says he wants in the excitement of the unfolding of his scientific and technological powers modern man has built a system of production that ravishes nature and it has produced a type of society that mutilates man is the warning given by him and he also says if the fight against pollution um has to be successful the patterns of production and consumption have to change 
he never considered the non industrialized world as underdeveloped he did not consider that he was shoemaker was an ecological economist a humane economist thank you very much